This is After the Revolution, a review of architecture's massive consequences. My name is Xavier Rona, and today our guest is Mr. Terry Clark. Hello. Um, uh, Terry, Mr. Terry Clark is professor at the University of Chicago, Department of Sociology and International Coordinator of the Fiscal Austerity and Urban Innovation Project. As listed on the University of Chicago's website, Terry Clark is interested in using decision-making theory to approach urban politics and other social phenomena. He has published some 30 books, including The New Political Culture, Urban Innovation, and The City as an Entertainment Machine. His extensive research on scenes proposes a framework that joins the amenities work from economics with core social and cultural processes from sociology. Clark uses the idea of a scene to help develop tools capable of analyzing the nuances of how ideas of what is right or wrong, authentic or inauthentic, and creative or boring shape people's decision about where, how, and with whom they associate. So I prepared... Uh, is that, does that still true? <laughs> yes. Uh, so I prepared uh, six questions. Um, and uh, we might follow them or not, we'll see. Uh, the first question I'm really eager to ask you is, uh, what is austerity? Yeah, austerity uh, uh, is the uh, concern, the, the, let's say, the political and cultural assessment of an economic and fiscal situation. So the, the economic and fiscal situation out of which this most recently emerged for us was really relatively continual growth of government along with the economy uh, from roughly World War II until about 1972. So the, 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 the term austerity was already uh, used after the oh. Second World War II? No. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sure austerity was there, was there for a, a, long, a long, long time. Okay. But, uh, but I would say the political and social meaning which is most current and which informed our, our project and analyses was really the transformation after this period. I mean, the, the French have been very explicit about how, how these, these, these glorious years of growth mm -hmm. ended. Uh, and basically, since about 1972, there's been no real economic growth for the average person in the U.S., Northern, Northern, North, North America, uh, Europe, Japan. There's been no real growth. There's growth in income for the upper income sectors, there's, there's growth in GNP, but the average, the average person below, let's say, the top 20, 30% has not seen any real increase in income. And in terms of government, in terms of social programs and the like, funding, funding uh, these kinds of concerns, there's been austerity in the sense that there's been a cutback generally in government programs relative to what there was earlier. And that, can, that sense that, there, that we are not growing the way we did is a, is a subjective or a, an, a cultural conceptualization of austerity. Now that's a problem on the political left. It may be a good thing on the political right, and, but I would say, I mean, there, there, there are two parts. I mean, eco, the lack of economic growth is not a, is not a good thing from a Milton Friedman standpoint. Mm -hmm. But it, the, the cutting of government may be a good thing from their standpoint. But, but austerity has, it includes both. So austerity is both private sector lack of, lack of growth and uh, re related or possibly or not necessarily tightly related to that is the relative growth of, of government. Okay, so austerity is lack of growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, okay, okay, so yeah, I, I will, will I, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to follow up, sure. Yeah, yeah. So in your, in your understanding, is this austerity concept uh, uh, term tied to any, part, particularly tied to any ideology, meaning that it would be an implemented project, uh, ideological project, or is, or is austerity a non-controlled, incident, incidental, uh, chaotic uh, phenomenon? Well, there, there are elements, there, there are many, many elements, and so some, some are more directly ideological and policy-related, others are, are harder to control. So, the, I mean, the immediate source of the crisis was seen by many as the, as the, the, the movement up in the price of oil. And the global price of oil was in part 
a political decision by, by especially Saudi Arabia and certain countries in the Middle East to reduce production. So that was a, poli a clear policy yeah, decision, yeah. and we, we have a similar situation now in, in the last, last, last two years or so, that the price of oil has dropped. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, there, there is a clear policy, but it is not one in which many, many programs and political leaders are participating. It tends to be a relatively small number of oil producing or energy producing so, policy makers. So, so austerity would... But, but that, that's yeah. one component. Yeah, sure. But that, uh, as, as you, from what I understand, it's a, an important one. Yeah. It's a defining but, one. I mean, but that, that's the background and that may be the most global and difficult to control. When you get to nations or to lo localities, to local governments, to mayors or to neighborhoods such as this neighborhood, then the issues are much more uh, loose and malleable or in the sense that there is more local variation. Nations vary between Germany and Greece, uh, between Margaret Thatcher and Tony Blair and, and the Portuguese, for instance, and, and, and others in, in, in China. Uh, uh, so there, there are major, major national variations, but within nations, and this is more controversial, especially for the French. That is, the French, especially, and I've been, in, I've been at many meetings with, 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 with French, French policy. The, the Parisians, let me say, the Parisians <laughs> tend to see France as unified, consistent, and find very little local variation. I come from the other side, from bottom up, from looking at neighborhoods and cities and so forth, mm -hmm. and have been attentive to and have worked with, let's say, decades of initially American graduate students and now, and now generations of French students as well, who have documented local variations inside France in ways that make political sense and policy sense and so forth. And so where and why you have a, have a focus on grow, I mean, the, the, sim the simplest way to capture that is, is the government growing or decreasing in size, uh, and how much is that an explicit policy emphasis of the mayor, the city council, and so forth. And this, this, is, for, this is the classic primary variable for many ideological classifications of, of political parties. Now, okay, so I'll stop there for a moment. Okay. Um... Uh, so today, the notion of austerity, at least in Europe, is very much pushed forward by Angela Merkel's government. Uh, from your understanding, do you think it can be linked with what Max Weber described as a Protestant ethics um, in his book uh, Protestant Ethics and the Spirit of Capitalism, Germany being a dominantly Protestant country? Yes. <laughs> uh, that is, I, I and others have pursued this in, in some detail in Europe and also within the U.S. And the interesting point, is, as uh, Emil Durkheim pointed out in his book Suicide, Germany is divided. So Germany has Protestant and different kinds of Protestants. It has, Catholic, it has Catholics in the South, it has Lutherans, and it has some Calvinists. Uh, and, uh, and there are variations in suicide rates, which Durkheim pointed out, related to this sense of mm. social integration. So the classic, so, so it's a, that is, so Protestantism is a classic, simple measure of social integration with Catholicism having your, having your way to heaven be through confession and the church. Yeah. So you must confess to the priest, the priest must must say, recognize your, accept your confession and say, yes, uh, you may repent and you, and you, and you can continue in, in, in life and things will improve. The Protestant cannot. The Protestant must read the Bible alone, worry, hope, pray that he is improving his life. And so the, so the Calvinist, I mean, the, the, the Frenchman, the French priest, Jean Calvin, Jean Calvin, who started the most well, let's say, the most extreme version of this, and had to had to go to Switzerland, and then had many converts, and then many followers in the Netherlands, then and then in in in, in uh, Scotland, and then when things in in England and Scotland became oppressive w w for them, they went to New England, and so the, the northeast co corner of the U.S. has this strong, most pure version of Protestantism because it has nothing else there, mm -hmm. only the only the native, a handful of, of Native Americans. So in that sense, you get America is a country of immigrants, but the European components 
are sometimes more pure than they were in their European context, where they were more mixed and battling with other with other with other components. So Calvin, even if, if he was French, he he left France, but even within Switzerland there was diversity. But then, uh, as this, as this spread, one could and so there there is now a lot of recent scholarship on conceptions of social integration, social support, collective concern. Uh, after the, I mean, what to do after the revolution? And yes, there's a strong interpenetration of these in terms of what is right or wrong. And that's, I'd say, it's a para, it's a, it's only one version, but it's a simple paradigmatic version of what we're doing in our work on scene. So we're at, instead of having one dimension such as austerity, we now have 15. And so we're looking at many, many different ways. But our our concern is to is to identify the psychological sense of good, bad, right, wrong which comes from the underlying cultural, religious, uh, social kinds of concerns, which Max Weber, which Durkheim, uh, Georges Bataille, and others analyzed in ways that they interpenetrate what people do and, and what they feel is right or wrong. Mm-hmm. From, from Angela Merkel to, to uh, Theaster Gates on the South Side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> But let me add one, one, one point which is implicit in some of your questions, which is that the, the, the simple label in, uh, of neoliberalism really comes from the Milton Friedman, uh, Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher kind of thrust. Yeah. The first president, oh, so, okay, when, when, when Mitterrand took power in 1981, he took power with the communists, the socialists and communists took power the, the number of jobs, the number of government jobs in, of, in firms over, I think, tw- 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 2,000 in France went from about 20% to 42%. So there was a, a movement in a socialization direction. Over the next two years, there was a, a, a lot of political controversy over this. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? And the, 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 the political, at least, the elections, which followed at the local level, two, two years and then, and then after that, led to the election of many new mayors. Mm-hmm. And that we then identified in a paper in the La Revue Tocqueville mm-hmm. called New Mayors, France and the U.S. People like Alain Carignan in Grenoble, Michel Noir in Lyon, joined some of the concern with austerity, shared with, with Thatcher, but most important was they had decentralization, bottom-up, citizen engagement and autonomy, and or this was then conceptualized within the so, within the Socialist Party by Michel Rocard especially. Mm. Yeah. So there were so there were branches within, and this of course is after 1968. So these mm. were the ideals of the 1968 student movement, mm. which of course go back to Christianity, egalitarianism, mm. participation, and the like. But they were crystallized in 68 in powerful ways in, that are that are still with us, <coughs> and so. This, this elect, these elections led to the, <clears throat> the emergence of these new leaders who, in France, we did the paper on them. Uh, Mitterrand, with, that is, we, then, we were then invited to hold a, a meeting at the University of Paris, Nanterre, mm-hmm. by the French Socialist Party. Mm-hmm. There were four, four, uh, 200 people invited, 100 chosen by the Socialist Party, who were mayors, uh, all the, um, and uh, various people for, with, within the within the party and, and journalists and commentators and so forth, uh, party thinkers. The other 100 were people from across Europe and the U.S. who th- were th- were doing, thinking, writing, analyzing related issues. Mm-hmm. And the issue is what should be the program of the Socialist Party, which had yeah. come to power with the communists, and which said we want to do something different, but what? And it was completely open. So it was a uh, a, a very open, fascinating debate. I think it was 1985 mm-hmm. uh, that, that, that this was held, 80, 84, 85. Uh, and uh, <coughs> the, 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 the bottom line for the, for the French Socialist Party was, was Michel Rocard. Basically, that Mitterrand moved in that direction away from the communists. But the bigger point internationally was this was an effort to, to, to abandon neoliberalism mm-hmm. and, to, and to say we've coming from the left mm-hmm. want to, must do certain things. We must recognize that we're losing investment. We're, we've, got a high, we've got a massive un, unemployment rate in France. We have to do something. And so the socialist program of helping the disadvantaged, 
bottom-up participation, transparency, and the like, was then combined with a sense that, but we, but we can't spend too, too much money. Hmm. And that, that is what, those are the core items. We have, we have five or six items which combine. Uh, those core items you then find in Tony Blair, Bill Clinton as president, uh, and, 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 and many others today. The big point is it is not simply neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. Some of the fiscal and austerity issues come from the right, but the social issues come from the left, mm -hmm. and it's a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, and, and it, is it a conflict? Yes, there's a clear conflict between spending less and helping more, especially mm -hmm. the disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And so how can, how can government or collective collectivities ever, ever do this? The logical answer is by, by improving productivity. All right, so the classic left and the classic right say productivity is, a, is hypocrisy. It cannot be done. You can only follow a left program or a right program. Mm -hmm. The people, the, the, these people, however, from Etheron, Blair, and so forth, have basically been trying to build projects which, which work and which illustrate there are ways of improving productivity and helping people do, 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 do achieve these goals of the left with less. Mm -hmm. And so, how, and, but finding these has been difficult, but I would say the efforts you see here in Greater Grand Crossing mm -hmm. with the Astor Gates mm -hmm. are a continuation of these concerns. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there are many, many diverse, diverse, diverse efforts, mm -hmm. but having, I mean, having us share these ideas, having this discussion right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. is an illustration of an effort to join the biggest, best ideas from Christianity, egalitarianism, Protestantism, through the, so, the social theories, through architecture, mm -hmm. and how these can be joined in, in new, that is, this is happening, whatever we say as theorists, this is happening now on the ground mm -hmm. by political leaders, by neighborhood folks, by people who may or may not have a bigger, that is in France, you more often have a, have a grander ideological conception. Mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in the US and some other places, people just sometimes just do things, they, they, although they're, 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 they're uh, there, there are labels from this which have French, French names like trying mm -hmm. things out uh, mm -hmm. uh, in a, in a quasi-random, quasi I won't say random, but with, that is, this is happening both in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in, your, in your exhibit here in a very articulated, coherent, thoughtful way, and at that, that, in that abstract level, directly linked to the best minds of, of theory. Mm -hmm. It's also happening among political leaders and their party programs. It's also happening with average people as they try to lead, to lead their lives, mm -hmm. where, they, where they want to join, join these things in new ways. And so we, we've, for the last several decades, we, we published maybe 15 or 20 books that deal with different pieces of this. We've looked at citizen surveys, We've looked at, at mayors and sur surveys of mayors and of, and, of, and of civic groups. We have a new book called The Third Sector on civic groups from China to Japan to Korea to France to the U.S. and how the civic sector is emerging. It's been, the civic sector in France has been basically repressed since 1789 through the 19th century. It was considered, you know, revolutionary and so it was, was suppressed. In the 20th century, it's taken off so that the, 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 and, and of course, the leading theorist was Alexis de Tocqueville. Mm -hmm. So t the leading theorist of American participation in democracy was a, was, was a Frenchman uh, in, in the early 19th century. And those ideas of Tocqueville and others are now informing lots of discussion and debate worldwide from, from China to, 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 uh, to Canada to, mm -hmm. to, 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 uh, to, 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 to Argentina. Okay, so that's a quick overview. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's it's important that you added this because there is uh, an underlying question, which is uh, I don't know necessarily how to ask it. It's not, uh, so I'm glad you addressed it more directly than I actually did. Um, uh, so may, you've probably already answered a bit of this, but if you want to add something. According to you, are there ties between austerity and neoliberalism? When I refer to neoliberalism, I'm referring to this Hayekian, Friedmanian idea that any intervention of the state ought to be understood as a problem posed to the natural self-regulation of inequalities that would occur in a completely free market. Are austerity measures and neoliberalism tied, or are they two different unconnected worlds that randomly collide from time to time? And, and since I'm sort of uh, responding to what you said, I, th I think part of the question I'm wondering is, 
two things. The first thing is how much of reality is designed and how much of it is just uh, uh, unplanned. Uh, or what, are, what are the impact of ideas in the construction of reality? As a Marxist, you know, uh, uh, it, it <laughs> Marx would claim more that, the, you know, it's the tension between classes that would do more than ideals or whatever. But um, I'm still wondering... Uh, um, how much ideas have, have consequences on, on reality. And uh, there was a second thing, but I forgot about it, so I'll just uh, let you go now. No. Mm. Uh, the, the, the most precise answers to that have been probably given by political scientists who've tried to say, what's the relationship between either the party of the, of the leadership, say, of the government, uh, or the party program, which is, which is say, more neoliberal or less neoliberal, mm -hmm. and then specific policies, mm -hmm. such as, is, is the budget going up or down, mm -hmm. and then how much is, and then, and then may, that's of the government, and then how much is private sector growth increasing mm -hmm. or decreasing. And, and what is the effect on those on the, uh, the sorry, of, 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 uh, of, of average people? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, you know, and, and indeed, these are, these are core fundamental empirical and ideological and uh, analytical issues. Uh, the, the, the ideals of, of Friedman, Hayek, Ronald, roughly as well, Ronald Reagan and, and Margaret Thatcher, were to, were to do just what you said. When they, when, but when they came to office, neither Thatcher nor yeah. Reagan, in fact, cut their government. In part because they had, they had a fair number of, 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 of more left parties that they had to deal with, but also because they had, they had many constituents who were within their own parties and who were cautious about, so, well, how about Social Security, how about, and, and you know, uh, we don't want to cut Texas, <laughs> everything but not Texas, <laughs> etc. So, in fact... Tu fais gaffe que l'autre c'est pas, hein? Oui, ok, sorry, parce que nous avons one. Sure. So, 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 in fact, the ideology was not implemented often, even by these strongly, uh, these classic, strongest um, supporters of Milton, Fried, Milton Friedman's pr 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 program. <laughs> and I saw a lot of this. I mean, I was here at Chicago th 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 through these years. I saw The Economist. I go, I go, I go to their workshops. We, yeah, sure. we, have, we have these kinds of discussions, uh, et, 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 et cetera. Uh, <clears throat> so... The ideals were not implemented often, even at the national level there. And then, um, if I can add a second one, they're, 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 they're big, that, that is, but they could be. That is, in some, in some political systems, they, they could be highly coherent and consistent. Mm -hmm. How, but, but I'm making the simple point that these are, these are, in some ways, if we break them up into, into, into parts, they are measurable and, anal and analyzable, and, and, yeah. and we have we have done we've done a fair amount of this in, in the in the several books in our project. For example, at the at the national level, that is, it, in, I'll contrast to the U.S. because it's so different from France. Fra France and much of Western Europe has strong parties. The parties impose a national ideology on mayors and local officials, and they try to on their voters and citizens. I mentioned earlier Michel Noir and Alain Carignan. What they did, which was most bothersome to their to, to, to their party leaders, was to break with a national party ideology. Mm -hmm. And so they they tried to incorporate these aspects of the 1968 student student revolution mm -hmm. within moderate conservative political parties, or or others. And then within I mentioned the Socialist Party had had, had these open debates. So the, 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 by contrast, in the U.S., the political parties have a coherent national program, which you see battled over in the, especially in the presidential presidential primaries and debates mm -hmm. between yeah. Hillary Clinton and Obama, etc. As they go around, Bernie, etc., etc. Et 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 <laughs> indeed, but but. Uh, when you go down to the state and then to the local level and to neighborhoods and then to individual citizens, if you analyze what's the relationship among these things, at the, at the citizen level, the classic studies since the 1950s done by Philip Converse have shown roughly 92% of Americans have no coherence at all. 
maybe 8% have intellectual, that is, if you ask the same question, are you, favor in, are you in favor of helping the disadvantaged more? Are you in favor of, re, of having the government redistribute income and so forth? You ask that at the beginning of the questionnaire and the end of the questionnaire, and about 90% of Americans contradict themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Philip and, and that's probably he, not... He, uh, he, then, he then did another book on France, this fact, and found the same thing yeah, with, yeah. with French citizens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So average citizens do not have coherent party programs in their heads. As you get to mayors, within, within uh, the U.S. political uh, landscape at the local level, there again is zero. There's no statistical relationship between, the, between Republican and Democrat and spending more and spending less or saying, if you were mayor, I would like to spend more or spend less. So even, and so that is, and this, I'm saying this because it's the opposite of what's happening nationally. At the national level is a strong ideological relation. Democrats want less spending, right. uh, de Democrats want more spending. Than public. Hmm. At the local level, it disappears. Uh, why? Because, in, because in places like, like Texas, mm -hmm. you have everybody is f fiscally and relatively often socially conservative. Mm -hmm. Around, and if you're Democrat or Republican. So, uh, in, yeah. in Massachusetts, it's the opposite. In Massachusetts, Republicans and Democrats want to want to help the disadvantaged more. They supported the they supported many redistributive programs. In Massachusetts, is the most high spending state, and, and it's the most moralistic New England Calvinist state in the part region. Well, it's it's the articulated core of New England in, the, in those policies. So, yeah, that's. Complicated, like meaning, like um, would there be a, a, a dissociation between coherence and um, and just like morals? Like meaning, like people, people, you say, you say, I think if I understand correctly, you were saying people are more liberal or people are more conservative. Uh, that would be the defining factor, regardless of the coherence of the political system. Uh, as a well, there, I mean, there, there are a number of specifics we can add. I mean, one big one is. Is uh, which I want briefly. I'll just say, Europe is changing. France is changing in the direction of moving toward um, the resolution of that of that paradox. That is, how can it be that ninety percent of people have no coherence? Mm -hmm. They do have coherence if you ask them about specific issues mm -hmm. in which they are interested. Mm -hmm. So, Theaster yeah. Gates no, really knows about art. Yeah. You really know about architecture and, mm -hmm. and, and other things. And so if one asks about those kinds of things, people may have highly coherent, articulated mm -hmm. concerns, but you get to, say, dogs yeah. or, or chickens or something else, and they may, you yeah, know, they, they, they may have totally uh, mm. you know, r random, random answers to, 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 to certain questions. This is called issue specificity. And the point is, issue specificity is, oops, sorry. Sorry, is rising for, it has been there for a long time, but it's being recognized more. It's more easy to recognize in a multi-party system because a political party like the Greens can say, the environment is the issue, that's our issue. Mm -hmm. And the Greens may focus only on that, mm -hmm. or they may be red-green and deal with a broader range mm -hmm. of ideological egalitarianism, helping the disadvantage, which you're not not necessarily uh, shared by all Greens, yeah. but, 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 but in a sense, these can be analytically distinguished, articulated precisely, and often, with what we're talking about, measured. And so, so, there, so there are many simple quantitative answers to, to, to the questions you, you've posed. Mm -hmm. Some of them, when you get to more abstract things, are harder, mm -hmm. but, but, but at least I'm giving you some, some of the sharper, most dramatic yes. cases to, to point out how, how different France was in in the period when Tocqueville, Tocqueville studied France, and, and and how much that continued into the early 20th century. But today, you have as many basically you have as much uh, organizational activity in France as you do in in the in, in the U.S. The tone, the style is different. There's more, as I, as I put it, uh, you have a you, there is in America no Charlie Hebdo. And there's no canard en yeah, yeah, yeah. That sense of anarchist anger, mm -hmm. anti-establishment, of which 
partially overlaps with Georges Bataille. Mm -hmm. is a mu it's present, but it's much, much weaker in the U.S. You can find it in English departments. Mm -hmm. You can find it in some African-American rap music. You can find it in gangs and the, uh, and the rap music of yeah. gangs in, in this neighborhood. And I lived myself. I've lived... I've never lived in a white neighborhood in Chicago. I've lived in a 99.9% .9 African-American neighborhood called Bronzeville, north of here. Mm -hmm. But it's very similar to this neighborhood in its politics and its socioeconomic uh, character. And I sit on many boards. I'm the only white person on many of these boards. Mm -hmm. But I, I work on civic groups, with arts groups, with development groups. So I've been involved in these conversations about how do these things affect and are they articulated how do they how how should we as african americans low income address these kinds of bigger concerns which go back to the bible mm. and for which exactly. we have, we so, have we, which we have some solutions in places like china or france so one question that that is very like this is really off charts but um, one of the issues that because uh, here I'm, you know i'm a tourist like uh, even if i'm here for a month i you know i just can just try to grasp bits of understanding one of the major difference uh, is the religion And as a Marxist, uh, again, I would say, like, you know, I believe that's why I have a red flag up there, like the flag of the people, and, you know, I want people to unite. And the, often the, the answer I get is, you know, men can do so much, then it's the Lord, right? Uh, and I totally respect that. It's just, like, in terms of... So, uh, Uh, it raises questions about like uh, like I get pissed off because I'm like you know we get it we get to get our hands on this thing and 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 then I think like how is it like apparently uh, Martin Luther King or Malcolm X uh, I, I I discovered I didn't know that Malcolm X apparently was religious uh, uh, and how is it that there was some tie because it seems like the on this case is ideological standpoints really do have a very strong impact on you know the people's reaction towards the government or or you know like a, how, how reality is shaped and why people would mainly vote against their own interest you see so uh, uh, how i don't know if that can no, be an no, answer it's ab it's absolutely central uh, the but again France and the US are excellent cases because France is one of the least religious countries in the world, mm -hmm. as shown by people who say they do or do not believe in God, they don't believe in the afterlife, do they pray, mm -hmm. do, or do they go to church on Sunday? France is one, is one of the lowest. Yeah, I've seen like 30, uh, 35, I have to check, <laughs> because 30, 35%, I think, uh, of people and, in and, France. And in yeah. and, and, and some measures, e e even lower. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., it's about 50%, in, meaning, but there, there are also places... Uh, in Western Europe, Poland and, and uh, Ireland were among the most religious, but they were both Catholic rather than Protestant. Mm -hmm. But that was, that was related to the anti-English and the anti-Russian context, which were, whereby the church was sort of seen as an alternative to this, to this colonial administration. But internationally, I mean, look at the Middle East. I mean, the, yeah. the, middle, the battles are over, at least ostensibly, publicly, they're over religion. Yeah. Uh, and in, in, in uh, former Burma, that is, there, 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 there's, there, there's, there's, there are lots of religious battles which are, which are still going on. And the, the Chinese, even though they, they, it's a Marxist, officially a Marxist society, the, they're, they're very worried about holding, about not permitting religious activities to emerge because of the, of the, of the potential and the, and the the actual gen the degree of massive public support which is, which is potentially there so yeah. so so absolutely the, the 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 relationship and the interpenetration between these is is, is absolutely central it's been analyzed for yeah. a century and a half by by, by Marxists yeah, by, yeah, by yeah, others yeah, yeah. seriously but yeah. from from on 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 on, 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 uh, on on each of these on each of these levels and there are many different combinations either open conflict the sort of secular lay Others have saying, you know, we can have a Marxist, Christ, a Christian Marxism, or at least, a, or a, a, you know, a social Catholicism. Mm -hmm. So there, there are all kinds of combinations which exist, and in, and in part, it's a question of how large are these different support. So that is, that what I'm, what I'm giving you as, as a way of answering is what we've done is to try to say, don't, don't act, start with the question you, as you posed it, but break up religion and break up Marxism into their components. Mm -hmm. So Marxism includes egalitarianism, which is shared often by Christianity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it includes rationality, which is partially, which is partially that. 
there's a rational analysis of the of the scientific uh, expansion of history. Uh, there, there's a, there's an economic analysis of the of going from the stages of, of agriculture, uh, uh, capitalist, uh, socialist, communist, etc. Et, et, et so that is there there are components which we can which we can try to find which are partially shared by different by different subgroups. And so rather than then seeing seeing or saying that one that one is inherently opposed, we can try to say, I mean, how much are that, that is if if it, and well, my last book is called Can Tugfill Karaoke? Yeah, I've said. It takes two French theorists, Alexis de Tugfill, uh, and uh, the, the legacy from Balzac, Baudelaire, uh, and Walter Benjamin, which is basically the, the Bohemia, La Boheme. Mm -hmm. How much is La Boheme a source of economic growth? And the thesis of, of, from, from these writers, continued then by Joseph Schumpeter, by Jane Jacobs, and others, is that this is a major source of creativity. So Balzac was the first independent artist who wrote explicitly that the artist must be creative, must be independent of the market, must, must, not, be able to, must not be under a patron, must be able to express his own. That I mean that led to the ideology of Bohemia, of having long hair, of having a, a distinctive lifestyle, living in Montmartre, then the Latin Quarter, and then and, then, yeah. and living in a in a neighborhood where you could creatively throw off the the the, the uh, Foucault-like oppression of the church and of the bourgeoisie and of lifestyle. Write, think, invent, create cre cre creatively. Okay, those ideas are core in France. And in much of the West, mm -hmm. of Tocqueville and of and of and of and of, and of Bo Bohemia as a source of innovation. When we went to when we went to Asia, they fell flat. Mm -hmm. They said, "What is Bohemia?" Mm -hmm. They said, "Participation is not is not Japanese. We have no we have no tradition of democracy in Japan." Mm -hmm. Four hundred Japanese political scientists. I spoke to the Japan Political Science Association. I went to them for two weeks afterward. I interviewed them one by one by one by one. again and again and again. We have no tradition of, of participation in democracy in Japan. So, but, but how about artists? How about intellectuals? No, same thing. Okay, so the, the roots are deeply different. And so our book is we spent 10 years working with mainly Asians to try to answer your questions, not in a, partially in abstract, but mostly by saying how and why do these different components come together with a coherence that seems logical and natural if you're Balzac or Baudelaire or Benjamin in Paris or in Greenwich Village or in Wicker Park in Chicago? It all fits. Uh, but, and, but, but you go you go to Tokyo, you go to Beijing, you go to Seoul, and it does not. And so where and how these, these, these combinations then shift are things that can be both analyzed in abstract with assumptions, which is more what Friedman and, and Hayek did, or what, we, what we're doing differs in the sense we're trying to break up the components and then take them to local, local neighborhoods in, in the 45,000 neighborhoods and zip codes in the U.S., yeah, and yeah, similar yeah. little local units in China and Korea, Japan, France, Spain, and, 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 and Poland. So we, have a, we, had a, we, we had an open competition with the mayor of Paris, Stephen Sawyer and I, who's a, a, an American, but who who's, has a French wife from the École Normale Supérieure. He taught at the École Normale, and he's, he's now teaching at the Sorbonne in, in, uh, in, in, in history, urban policy, and uh, political science, um, are analyzing this. And we've mapped for three, that is, it was a competition. We won. We beat the French. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and we have mapped... Yeah, so you had a map there of the 1848 neighborhoods where they had yes. where, they, where they had the, uh, the, uh, the 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 barricades. We have mapped things like that for the the Greater Paris area. Do you mind if I have a cigarette? Uh, no, uh, sorry, I'm, no, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm, 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 I would prefer not. Okay, okay, okay. no problem. Uh, slight hours. Okay. Um, the um, uh, we have we have maps of there over 15 dimensions. So we have egalitarianism, neighborliness, glamour. Mm. Charisma, 
uh, yeah, I've seen the, and, and, the, the, and we and we have and we have these in in and there and so so the board the board year was a good friend of board year. The, I mean, the board year question is how much is this driven by income? So I should I should add. I was a student of of uh, of uh, uh, Henri Lefebvre, Adorno. That's where I began. So my my you know, I then I worked as translator interpreter in Guinea with Seco Touré, which was the Marxist country in Africa, mm-hmm. and I worked on the, these issues in an, in an active way. So my, mm. yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I I know the issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so so the 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 and, and and this and the roots of what we are doing goes back to that. That is, we are we're trying to extend the same kind of questions that that you're posing, which come out of this analytical tradition. And, and and continue them today in ways that build that build on the best be, be, because and these these concerns are being asked by by Marxists they were being asked by Marxists twenty plus years ago in Yugoslavia so I worked in Yugoslavia with the Yugoslav uh, communists there I'm working now with the Chinese mm-hmm. we did a three year project with the with funded by the Ministry of Civil Affairs in Beijing mm-hmm. we published a book in Mandarin we're now it is now just got, uh, going into production in English called the third sector mm-hmm. so how can and do social or their term is social organizations or civic groups and this is what Tuckville wrote about how how can these things work and how do they work in different ways in France China and, and the US and, and, and a few other comparisons and, and so, so we're trying to articulate specific variations in institutional mechanisms and structures that don't, that don't have a yes, no, black, white answer to your question, hmm. but which give many, many different colors. And so what we're, I mean, the, the, the building we are in and the personality, the programs of Theaster Gates hmm. are exactly a very creative if you, if you say a very contemporary continuation of the ideals of Balzac and Baudelaire, that is, he's mm. an artist. Mm. He's doing brilliantly, brilliantly new art, but he's also doing economics, mm. development, political organization, neighborhood, neighborhood friendliness, mm. and he uses some of the language of the Bible. Mm. It's a link to religion. Yeah, yeah, and so that is, he has an Old Testament. He sings. His music is from yeah, the Bible. It's yeah, from yeah. gospel and from and, and, and the like. So he joins these in a very creative way. We've collaborated with him for about the last year. I've had interns and working, mm. we're working with, reading, looking at his very subtle uh, YouTube videos to mm. try to say how is he joining these elements mm-hmm. and he and his staff of 55 mm. we're working with to try to make this more coherent so these creative messages can be taken to Detroit Gary or maybe France and the world as, mm. as he, I mean he was he was he was championed as at the at the at the, at the um, Venice uh, Biennale is the most creative artist and in, in the world in, in, in some respects there is massive interest in his ideas. Mm-hmm. He's he's not anti or you know breaking with anything. He's trying to put together things in a quasi intuitive way that has aesthetic, participatory, religious, ideological meaning, and which breaks from the tradition that poverty cannot be. Mm-hmm. I mean, poverty can't be changed. The poor people all would. I mean, mm-hmm. if Bourdieu were here, he would say, "No, you can. You know, give up." Yeah. <laughs> Okay. He's he, he but he is theaster is finding ways of yeah. transforming Bourdieu's raw materials into creative projects that, that in fact work. Yeah, yeah. And it's very very impressive. Um, I had a lot of questions on the way, but now um, let me go back to my chart uh, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, let's go to the urban phenomenon. Also, since we were talking about theater, yeah, yeah we, we didn't get to that. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do race. How that. does how does austerity manifest itself as an urban phenomenon? Going back to to the idea of austerity, or when would it be said that this becomes a factor in the construction of the city? Absolutely. Okay, we started a project soon after, or a bit a bit after the the this. Fiscal crisis, international crisis in 1972-73. We started a project, and and at, at that point, especially in the U.S., but I'd say much of Western Europe, we met with the French Association of Mayors. We met with 
uh, near, near, near the beginning. Um, it was an international project of people, most initially Western Europe and the U.S., then it spread internationally and has covered thir 35 countries. And its title is Fiscal Austerity and Urban Innovation. Why urban? Because there's so many little fruit flies, they can try things out. Whereas nations are dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. They're very few, they're slow, mm -hmm. and they're very conservative. They don't change much, in part because they have such huge, diverse constituencies that fight with each other. And so the nation... Is that the case for all states? Yeah. Well, yeah. If, if you get to Switzerland, it's less yeah, no, no, true. Like all, all, yeah, no, there's, but, no, but, there's, but, no, there's, no, there's no main ex relevant exception to that. The, 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 Size. The, 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 the Scandinavians are more, are more homogeneous. That is, I'm getting it homo I'm saying high, so, so homogeneity and size are related, but, but they are, as you point out, they are analytically separate. Mm -hmm. And so, so the, the, simp the simple answer is if you go to the smaller, smaller, smaller unit, to cities and then neighborhoods like this one here, you have much more homogeneity mm -hmm. that you can then say what will work here in Greater Grand Crossing or in South Shore, these neighborhoods in African American South Side of Chicago, low income, low, low, lower middle income and, and, and the like, and what works here and what, what is transferable or not so transferable or how can it be modified to be transferable to take to a neighborhood in Paris or in Bobigny, or, uh, or, or, in, or in other places in, in, in Toulouse. Mm -hmm. that, those are the questions which we're, which we're basically asking with, within our project. Okay, this is in a way, of, I'm coming back to one of your very first questions. How much is, 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 is austerity the driver of innovation? That was what we, we started with, and, and everyone said, hey, will, will this happen or not? Mm -hmm. if that is positive, and, and the left and the right would have opposite. What, what do you mean by innovation? Uh, as uh, a we, we have a list of 32 policies which captured innovation, such as, I mean, some of them highly innovative, some of them not at all, but at least they were changes. Mm -hmm. So if you, I mean, if you have, uh, so, they, they, so they range from cutting taxes, increasing taxes, uh, contracting out to private providers of services, improving productivity, and that, that and that was a major one. So, and so there are many subtleties, but they, these were these were used in questionnaires that were given and used in in some ten thousand cities in thirty five countries. So we have measures of innovation from from Korea, from Japan, from uh, and, and, and Sweden. We have, I think, five waves of surveys of mayors because they kept changing the, the Swedish welfare state. They drastically abolished many of the core elements of the welfare state, but then they weren't sure. I mean, how many local governments are doing this or that? So they kept doing surveys to ask, what I mean, what are, what is, you know, what, what are you, what elements of the welfare state are you changing hmm. in each locality within Sweden? So that I mean that's an example of how this was hmm. integrated with policy and, and analysis at, at, at the same time. And so we, we both came up with a list, and we then had meetings with mayors, council members, uh, uh, finance directors of, of especially localities uh, acro across across Europe. So I mean, so they, they ranged from, um, from including especially Grenoble. So 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 when, I mean Alan Carignan, uh, others others. So we did we did so we did national surveys of mayors. We also did case studies. Mm -hmm. So we had we did two volumes of case studies on France, funded by the CNRS. We maybe. 600 pages. This was with about six or seven French participants. Vincent Hoffman Martineau mm -hmm. was a key collaborator. Jean Becquet was in Lille, he was in Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. Jean Yves Nevers in Toulouse. Uh, th those were the key, three key collaborators on the, on, the, on, the, on the case studies. And they went to other localities around France. And I went, I often went, so I interviewed mayors of Grenoble, of Lille, and, and, and others. And then we went to meetings of the French, French Association of Mayors. And had discussions in, 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 in very much these these mm -hmm. same terms, and they and they and they and many people would say, I mean, my background is here, is with Marx and so forth. Mm -hmm. But then they said, but we have to change. People won't, and people won't won't, won't support this, etc. Et, et mm -hmm. So, um, uh, okay. So to, to to come back a little bit more general, how does this work at the local level? The simple answer was 
Austerity. So I said, I, I said, what's the, what's the linkage? And you said, how do you how do you how do you measure conceptualize mm-hmm. innovation? Mm-hmm. We had a list of thirty two strategies, which were things that mayors and city governments basically considered either more or sometimes less innovative, mm-hmm. from okay. including productivity, cha- changing, increasing contracting out, get, get in changing staff. I mean, they they were. I mean, they weren't as grand and revolutionary as what you have on the wall here in general. But they, but those were things which they wanted to get to. Sure. Those, yeah. these, these are the same ideals which yeah, you, yeah, have, yeah. you have. You have around the world today. Yeah. Okay. So then, but the interesting finding was often, often there was no relationship between the two. In many countries, austerity and innovation were not related. So we then said, "Why? Well, who is innovating, and what's and, and what's happening here?" And we and we found that often, the, the, so we then looked at the other linkages. A key intervening linkage was the type of leadership was the mayor and the city council and their local program, and that's what was really argued about at Nanterre, at the mayor's associations of how do we do this. I mean, so they, they weren't, I mean, they were in part interested in the big party program, but they were most interested really in how can we make Grenoble attractive to, to, to how, can, how can we have help the, I mean, it was a, it was a, this left, is, this is a so left planning socialist city. It wanted to do good socialist planning things. It, it, had, an, it had a rationality and a sense of engineering with, in that old French background, but how to do it concretely was, 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 was it, and so, the, so the answers were often in specific policies, but the program tended to be that articulated by San and Alan Carignan and by other, which was closer to do more productive policies, do them issue specifically, and maybe don't worry about Friedman and Hayek. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because or, I have or, to say that. Or, or Marx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For that matter. <laughs> Um, uh, because because the, the Yugoslav socialists were doing the same things. I mean, they 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 were in, or in the the mayor of Naples. The mayor of Naples was a former communist. Hmm. Naples, it's a powerful example. People said for generations, Naples will never change. It's a mafia, you yeah, know, yeah, mafioso, yeah. clientelist machine. It can never be modified. It was revolutionized by by, Bor- by Mayor Borsellino about about t- 10, 12 years ago. He was a tough, tough Communist Party leader. He fought the mafia. He the the, the mafia sold parking spaces in all the big pub- public public uh, public arenas, public spaces. They sold cigarettes. He broke them in selling cigarettes. He broke and he, he took away all all the selling of those. And he then he mobilized average citizens in ways that worked. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're running there, there. out of coffee. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're running out of film or time? Or you're no, 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 no. I was, I was waiting to have a coffee because I yeah. Sorry, just a second. Go ahead. Get the film. This thing is. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's warming up. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is coffee. Oh, there is? Yeah, there is coffee. Sorry, I'll just take it. Do you, do you need a coffee? No, no thanks. Um, uh, just give me a second. And I guess part of my question also is, and this is maybe so. I, I first question. I I don't understand actually the question of, of that. Of that, why would innovation? Uh, this is a very stupid question. Why would innovation be tied with austerity? Why would they, would, would there be this, impli- this implied? Presupposition. Well, a, a Hayek Friedman idea okay, okay. could from, be from if we reduce taxes and if we if we um, cut government. Well, let's uh, put, put, put differently. So there, I'd say that there are three answers. I mean, the simple left answer is good government will do better things. Will be will help it egalitarianism of advance if we increase government programs and spendings from social housing to to, to whatever else. That's the classic left. The classic right is we must cut taxes in government in order that the creative private sector will be innovative. 
Yeah, okay. So, yeah. But in the middle, you have Mitterrand, Tony Blair, and so forth. And yeah. these these people say we have to cut we have to cut spending because citizens don't want to spend, but we want to advance the social programs of the left. We want we want to continue the social ideals of Marx, even well even though we don't we don't want to have a have a revolution. So after the revolution, for them, is finding issue specific pr performance enhancing activities that work, mm -hmm. maybe like this. Project of Theaster Gates. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is, this is a brilliantly innovative project. It has many complicated pieces, from religion to finance to art and so forth. And, aesthetics. And, and yeah. Aesthetics, and they're joined, and that's the kind of thing which we're trying to, 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 to study and disentangle to see how yeah. they work. Uh, with or without, and then and then maybe go back and, and say, how does this link to... to to Marx or to George Bataille or, or, or to others, but 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 to, to look to talk, to try to look explicitly and systematically, and then compare other kinds of innovations of 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 of, of, of this sort, which which are in fact improving productivity. Yeah, yeah I see. So there was uh, it was uh, 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 the the question was loaded. Uh, yeah. Into, yeah. So yeah. it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was trying to understand. And, and so, so, so for the for these people who have an idea, and, I, and we call them new the pe people who are yeah. part of the new, new great, political great. culture, the, yeah. the NPC, the, yeah. the, the la nouvelle culture politique, is a un, un livre publié en français. Et avant ça, c'était l'argent des villes, les, les deux livres en français. Uh, and um, so, so those core ideas were in, the, were in, the, in these two books, and they, they then we've we've continued in in the scenes and and Kentuckville karaoke, in ways and that is the idea is that these political leaders, because of their ideology that they want, they they feel they can't or should not spend, but in, in by through they don't want to raise taxes, but they want to achieve the social ideals. So in that sense, I'll, I'll just add, add quickly. Neoliberalism is a is a is a program rightly articulated by free, by, by 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 Hayek and others. But if you look empirically at, at national governments, political parties, or mayors, even though that label is used, especially in Latin America and some other places, it is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Often, so I would say it's a, it's an empirical question. But one should look and see how much is an individual mayor or president or a party actually also concerned with social issues. Yeah. How much are they concerned with women, with poverty, with, with, with the environment, with egalitarianism, with, with gay, lesbian rights? Mm. Uh, that is, these lifestyle issues may, may, I mean, they may, they may fit with fiscal conservatism, but they basically are largely independent Mm -hmm. Of the of the economy and of the finances, mm -hmm. so they so you can have people who are socially conservative, or socially socially tolerant and liberal, and people who are fiscally conservative and fiscally tolerant. And so so they so how they how they how they join mm -hmm. varies, and that's why you need a, a questionnaire or to ask an individual mayor. You need to do a case study of a of a, of a complicated case like like the Astor Gates. Mm -hmm. But that's so. But I guess the Esther Gates would be an exception, whereas as you were, so, uh, I'm saying, like you were describing for you, uh, we can map as a, a sociologist. I guess you can identify that you know Protestants would have such behavior. Blah, blah. So most of this, uh, uh, that is, he doesn't fit the simple kid. The yes. simple kid. That, 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 but that's the point. Yeah. That many people do not. Okay. Many people do not fit, so, this, fit the simple categories. Okay. And that's something that comes up through your study. Yes. Yeah. And we and we were surprised how you know how yeah. much that is. We had to change our models because because we found more complicated things. So that um, and they weren't just noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, 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 that's the other point. It's not just not just meaningless. It's meaningful if you if you dig and keep working. Um. So. Going back to, I guess, the, the big question that I have that I'm trying to share in that thing, but I, which I don't know where it goes, uh, and, and that I guess addresses directly what you were saying, is the, the question of top-down bottom-up. Uh, 
put them up, uh, you know, social rallies. Uh, I guess my th the thesis of this, uh, you don't have the manifesto, that little text, but uh, the, the idea is the, ha the rallies of hope, the, the, the revolutionary movements like Tahrir and all this, always arouse a lot of hope. And uh, But then uh, the idea of the after the revolution is that what's important, what we should be concerned uh, about, and what the, the right wing, uh, if you still accept this kind of organization, uh, what the right wing succeeded to do that the left didn't was to establish a system that works for them, somehow, somehow, so, like so, at so, least for so, so, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least that there, there is consolidation of capital, uh, and um, so uh, yeah, I was saying uh, top down and bottom, and so. Um, yeah, uh, you seem to uh, so yeah I was saying sorry I was saying that every time there's a, we, there's a revolution uh, or movements of crowd occupy or whatever there's a there's a, yeah there's a surge of hope but then uh, can we how can we come up with an alternative system or do we um, that's the bottom up as, as, uh, yeah let me put it this way sorry uh, we'll get that old blurbish thing. Um, that's the bottom up for you of open uh, an horizon for an alternative macro system, or isn't uh, is does bottom up imply the conservation of uh, the system as it is, or that it would be reformed from nature? We were talking to an activist, uh, like a, well, actually from the your neighborhood. Uh, uh, and uh, it's really a sincere question. I don't know. Uh, what can we... Uh, should we drop totally top-down thinking? Or, uh, you know, is it all going to come from bottom up? Uh, what's your... Uh, because I have the impression that the, the top-down elements are so strong. We came in 30 years between, you know, a ratio of uh, high wages to low wages of 1 to 30 to... 1 to 350, if my data is correct. That's a massive re-architecturing global thing. Uh, and uh, do you think bottom-up can uh, face that? Or should we... I like Zizek, another Marxist, when he says, I don't have the time to go vote every day. I just want a system that works. You know, Can we have the audacity to think that we should come up with an alternative system? Whereas, I, or at least as a French guy, my understanding of a bottom-up thing is more a reactionary... Uh, not reactionary in terms of uh, conservative, uh, but uh, something that might be bound to reaction to something in which it is opposition. So it's a dialectical process. But uh, you seem where yes, we're no, trying no, to no, aim no, at. Okay, sure. thanks. I, I would distinguish two Sorry. things. Okay. <laughs> we we we're pumping it up, but the, the yeah. technology is uh, is uh, is slowing yeah. us down. Um, Shall we keep talking, or do you want to...? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just going to be a second. Okay. Yeah, I'd rather... Because that mainly uh, go also going, I think, towards the end of at least the main questions that I wanted to ask you. Okay. Because uh, I don't want to keep you too long, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, happy to have a drink with you after if you have time, well, but... Uh, uh, I would love to, actually, but... Uh, I know you're... A busy person. Also, because actually, in, I teach, and a lot of what I teach is a, a low tech, very low tech attempt of the reading of the city. Uh, that I think uh, I was very impressed with what you did with students. With students, we try to read, like for instance, what the the name of the streets are, or where do they come from, or like trying to look at very simple, small things more than you know overarching. Uh, it's okay. Sorry. So. You, my okay. question was yeah. about yeah. yeah. You remember? Yeah. Two, two, two quick answers is to distinguish egalitarianism and participation, citizen participation. So, so citizen participation is in a sense the more specific manifestation of bottom up, but egalitarianism is an is a value which may be shared or variously uh, responded to, even if not shared, by political leaders, by civic leaders, by political party programs, and the like. 
So I would, I would throw out, say, two examples. Uh, China today has a strong thrust toward authoritarian dominance, which is covered in the Western press. But the Chinese leadership, I would say, are concerned that there is so much egalitarianism, that there's so much a sense that the average Chinese citizen is now so much more legitimate that they have to be more responsive to the average citizen, and this is this did not come just as from a, China as a possibility of singularization, or, or, or what? No, it, no, no, as as, a, as as to maintain its legitimacy as as as, a, as the communist leadership. Mm. And that is that they, they cannot stay in power if Unless, they if they don't have a sense if the citizens don't feel that they that they have leaders who they trust and, and support, mm -hmm. and and so so. Um, Uh, one one quick way. I, I've had a, stu a, a Taiwanese student who, who did a PhD here, and she covered environmental issues in Taiwan and then in mainland China. And in Taiwan, the same issue would be raised as in mainland China, but in Taiwan they would have protests, they would have demonstrations, it would be more like France. They would have public hearings, the national government would hold hearings, There would be manifestos, there would be environmental organizations that would protest and the like, and then very little was done. In China, they had almost no participation in, the, in that visible sense. They had a small number of, they would have a relatively small number of public challenges, but you had much more immediate, direct response in changes in policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that's an ancient... Asian tradition, mm -hmm. which the Japanese told to me again, that the, when, when they said we have no tradition of democracy, the, uh, an, ex, an example they repeatedly told me was, 500 years ago, if the emperor was going through a village, farmers might bring to him a signed manifesto with all of the farmers saying, we petition that you know, we're being maltreated by your administration, and here are three things that you really should change. Your local, your local man, manager of the area is doing bad things, and here's what's wrong. The emperor would go by, one farmer would go and place the envelope in the emperor's carriage. He would be immediately killed because it was known that no one may present a challenge to the emperor's authority. They knew he would die. Mm -hmm. The emperor would nevertheless give the letter to his staff. They would read it and they would change the policy because the farmers were right mm -hmm. and the man, the administrator was wrong. Mm -hmm. okay, that, so that's the, an Asian way of respecting hierarchy and implementing egalitarian uh, criteria this is, this is in the, ways that, that the West, the, we in the West just can, have, do not see. We, so we don't that, even, that to me, that and that would it be, totally challenges the top-down, bottom-up conception. Yeah. And that, to me, would be architecture. Okay. You see? No, but this, this is like, uh, you know, uh, uh, because it's also, uh, from what I understand about I am being lost in all these things, uh, somehow, sometimes I can point out what I understand of what he's trying to say, meaning a way to do things, a way to organize things. How, uh, what is our power to actually construct those things? You know, how to construct construction or how to construct organization, how to reform, uh, because, you know, like for instance, uh, in Japan, we did study a little bit, uh, when we were in the US, like through objects, you know, like if you take the beginning of the 18, 1853, I think, you know, the, the country shut down, then you have uh, the, the US come in, and then uh, in five years, uh, they change, like they get uh, the calen change calendar, they reform the army, they change uh, uh, the military system, and they have a postal system. Yeah, it's just like, like in five years, they can transform an entire uh, adapt. Uh, you know. so, But not, dem not democratically. <laughs> no, no, not democratic. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, no, but that's, and that's all the, the problem with architecture, is that architecture can get shit done. You know, you can get, like, uh, you know, but most of the time, it, it actually is through imposition of extreme. So, uh, so, and that's the thing I, I, I'm going to try to link it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but there seems to me in this discussion that there is a dissociation between somehow ideology, so Friedman, in fact, so there's a grand discourse, you know, 
uh, there's a Bernie's clause, but in fact it doesn't really work this way. Uh, let's say. Uh, oh, in, in, in some, in in some, some way, examples, in some it, ways, it, may, yeah, it, yeah. it may. In some arena, in some examples they choose, it may work as they, as they just describe. But in others, especially like when you get the more complicated, interrelated yeah. other factors, sure. it often. It often but happens. I was talking like, I'm going to try to discuss with the uh, Friedmanians. I've started to meet some. And uh, sometimes, you know, people say, we are very far from being in a Friedmanian world. Because they say, you know, uh, there's a lot, there's a, a, a enormous intervention of the state. Uh, you know, like so, but I would claim, like, still the grand discourse, whether it applies or not, appears to be the one of sure. competition. Sure. You know, of sure. like well, Boltonsky was saying, sure. you know, you generate a grand discourse of, of uh, uh, you know, the uh, new spirit of capitalism and you know, the managerial class or whatever. So, how how much of these things, on the one hand, you're talking about the capacity of a particular kind of people through a very long tradition to uh, get stuff done to reform like because they have organized but then it seems like capital but, uh, it, sorry in, I guess it's a Marxist way um, uh, is in capacity to actually reform the way some people do or uh, uh, some some I, I don't know from you might say differently but like this, you know there's this um, uh, book that was very much criticized but uh, I that I think uh, at, at least you might dis <laughs> tell me why I'm wrong you know Naomi Klein in the rise of disaster capitalism she says we are facing a disaster capi uh, something a capitalism that advances by catastrophe so for instance Katrina arrives there was po population that were still being able to um, uh, make uh, uh, mobilize every time for the uh, to keep schools public, but after Katrina, all these laws are passed while the population is not in capacity to mobilize uh, 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 to defend this system. This will then have an impact on you know the way children will be r uh, bred. I don't know, like uh, educated, uh, and uh, and that and thus they will think differently. So that would get. A reform of, or in the same way that I was trying to show in that social housing, uh, the first social housing where you know you tell guys to do this and girls to do that, and guy, uh, uh, you see what I'm saying? So how much of a social engineering is there, uh, according to your understanding, at work? You've identified links between ideologies or contradicting facts, but are there factors that do? impact those things um, like manufacturing consent or uh, you, you see what I think? Let me, let me answer with a very crude and simple uh, summary of uh, many years of social science research. If you look at many of the things that, that, that social scientists study, which are also the things that concern average people, mm -hmm. um, making more money, being more educated, rising occupationally, going to church, uh, practicing religion, joining a civic group, shopping. About 15% of the variation in more or less of all of these is explained by race, income, occupation, education, uh, fa fa father's occupation. Mm -hmm. So Bourdieu and Marx and all of these things explain about 15%. Mm -hmm. yes. 85% is not explained. Mm -hmm. It may be random, it may be noise, it may be combinations of these in unique or very unusual ways that don't fit the simpler models. Mm -hmm. So I would say any book that says the cause of, mm -hmm. you know, the, of, of change of you know, capitalist centralization is crisis is probably explaining 2%. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there, is, there are examples like Katrina that look partly that way, but it's too simple. <laughs> that put differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a social scientist, I would like to have, I would like to be able to build a model, and, and Marx as an analyst would like to be, I mean, he called it scientific socialism, mm -hmm. but he didn't have that much data. Mm -hmm. And so people who've later, you know, pursued and tried to say where and how can these things work, end up explaining, and this, this is true, most social science, Milton Friedman, you know, Hayek, I mean, and, the, and, their, and their students, they're explaining about 15%, mm -hmm. not much more. Mm -hmm. so, so, so all yeah. of these models are very weak. We live in a very probabilistic, non-deterministic world where there's lots of variation. So this I mean, goes back to the, the very first question on the second, which was, 
uh, how much of austerity as a concept or as a driving idea? Yeah, similarly, it may explain, would say it may explain to, to, to less, less, less. To, to two, yeah. three, four percent maybe. This is and, and combined with these other things. Now, now there, there may be individual cases where it seems to be bigger, but it's usually the combination of austerity with a political leader, with this part program, in a context like Protestantism or Orthodox, mm. Orthodox Christianity. So or it's the dynamic of, the, the of combination multi-factors. Of yes, yes, yes. But, okay. And so, so as an historian or journalist, you can try to say, you know, how do these variously combine in this unique case? Mm-hmm. I mean, like Theaster Gates. I mean, what's the cause of Theaster Gates' success? But he's an individual. It's very, very complicated. And it's, it's these many different things. And very, but it's certainly... The, 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 simple, the simple answer to that question is no one thing. Yeah. But uh, I guess uh, the, maybe... He had, just for Bordia, he has a master's degree in sculpture yeah. from yeah. the University of Iowa. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's now been named a professor at the university based on what he did in the street. Hmm. Not based on his degree, not he did. Yes, yes, I mean, yes. he was, a, he was, he, he had a... But I'm, I think I'm not trying to talk about determinism. I'm not trying to say, like, oh, because you're going to be that. I'm trying, trying to say, okay, I think, uh, okay, to, and again, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm a Marxist, so... Um, but there, to, there, are, there are all kinds of Marxists. Uh, yeah, 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 my point. Uh, from, from, from Yugoslavia <laughs> to China <laughs> to Russia. So, you know, no, but I'm saying I would, I would tend to see things, you know, in a... The matter is to change it. The, the, the point, however, is to change it. You know, that's famous. Uh, so, uh, you know, like uh, one, um, maybe too simplistic again, understanding of things but was this idea that... Um, uh, or most of the time, when, when one speaks, or when I speak to, uh, uh, and I speak a lot to sociologists, anthropologists, or, everything is always more complicated than it seems. You know, like, uh, and, and I would agree to that. But how can we turn this towards action? We still got, uh, I, I think, we went again from that 1, ra- one to 30 to 1 to 350 um, ratio between high and low, which is 30 years. This is very like this is very clear. This is sure. like this I, I, in terms of class struggle, we've had it okay. like very well, bad. Well, what, well what, what's the what's the answer? What are the best analyses of that? The, be, the best analyses are really by 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 people pe- by by some by some folks who've worked on on income inequality, mm-hmm. and their their main answer is really uh, I mean is articulated in the most widely read books by Saskia Sassen. Mm-hmm. And she and she has a book called The Global City, and she shows exactly that that kind of change. And her main answer is the same as Milton Friedman, and the same as Adam Smith, which is basically the extent of the market. There, so the reason the people at the top, and so she then goes by occupation by occupation in New York and London. So it says, who's earning this money? And the answer is not the people in the in the in the or, 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 okay. mm-hmm. uh, is is not the people in managers of big corporations. It's people who are who are selling products that are globally uh, Im- more important. Like in her example, she calls producer services, especially accounting firms, law firms, uh, management consultants. Who, who who sell to big corporations, not to you and me, but who sell their products to big corporations that are dealing with global markets. So I, so I have a law firm of 250 lawyers, and they can tell you the law in Tanzania, in Taiwan, in Tibet, and these are what the, this is what you have to do to sell your product to reach those markets and all of that. Those are the people who are making more money because the world has markets that are more global, which are more open since 1989. Mm-hmm. And so, 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 so the, the, the or, or put differently, whereas we're in an African-American neighborhood, if you ask who, who were the 10 Americans who made the most money, and this is about two or three years ago, there was a study of this, which Americans earned the most money? Were they the corporate leaders? Were they Wall Street leaders? Were they heads of corporations? No. How many, how many were, or sorry, one was yes, was Bill Gates. He was, he was, he was number one. The Queen of England, I think, I think was, was in there. 
Uh, so, but how many of the ten were African American as were in this neighborhood? Mm. What would you What would you say? No idea. Four. Who were the four? Michael Jordan, basketball player. Michael Jackson, singer, dancer. Ofra Winfrey, talk show hostess. Mm -hmm. And Magic Johnson, basketball player in Los Angeles. And corporate and so they're film. all in entertainment. They're not, they didn't get MBAs. They didn't come up in corporations. They went, they, they were... I mean, the, and so that you, you, if you look in the streets outside here today, in my neighborhood as well, the kids are writing songs and they're playing basketball. And those are the heroes they say, they see, I mean, they, they hear the contracts on the television day after day. So and so playing basketball just signed a contract for $37 million. He's the best basketball player in 37 million. They earn far, far more than most corporate presidents and boards. That's really stunning. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that uh, even the, the cultural, uh, the culture in France is uh, much more uh, represent well, one, much more. Yeah. Well, one, two. Why do the basketball players get paid so much? Because they have Chinese basketball. They when they when they hired, they hired a, this huge guy who's a Chinese basketball player. He's hired by an American team. His first game was viewed live on Chinese television by more people than the entire American population. Yeah. The millions, there were something like 400 million Chinese who watched the game in the US. Yeah. Okay, that's a market which increases the, the, the salary which the, the advertisers will pay money to increase the salary of the basketball players because basketball is a global product. Yeah. I think the real question that, want, that, that it called, to me that it all comes down to is, is there for you such a thing as a, as a world order? Very messy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, lots of people want a world order. I mean, no, no, I'm what, not I mean, what, willing what, for it. I mean, what, what, does ISIS want a world order? Yes, they want one. Does Obama, Obama would like to have a world order. Putin would like to have a world order. I you know, uh, it, So they, they all want it, but look what's happening in Syria today. I mean, the, the Americans, the Russians, the, the French, the Taiwanese, you know, the, the Australians, the English, they're all bombing, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're all fighting. I mean, it's, it's a, is it a world order? It's, it's a total disorder. <laughs> But like, so for instance, I, I would say it's not total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that is, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, no. that is, you have, you have, in, you know, in the same country, fighting, you know, fighting active people, making policy day by day. Clearly, it's not coherently uh, ordered. Okay, so uh, again, for instance, <laughs> no, I love this. <laughs> I give you uh, Jonathan Prairie. I don't know if you know him. He's an art historian. He wrote a book about. Um, 24-7, Capitalism and the Ends of Sleep, in which he says, uh, quoting Marx, uh, you know, there were boundaries, there were natural bar barriers to capital, to, to the expansion of capital, time, distance, these are all gone. Uh, but there's one that remained unbearable to capital, to simplify it very much, uh, is sleep. You know, there's this time that, you know, you could be very much productive and... And so the military, uh, again, through the war uh, sort of path, you know, a lot of um, uh, engineering comes in and the military is now not looking necessarily like in the first world war uh, as, okay, how can we keep up someone a uh, mo couple more hours uh, with pills? We're just going to try to erase the need for sleep. Uh, and so they're looking at birds, you know, bird migra migrating birds and studying their brains and see how, you know, like... And so, um, uh, the idea, and so then he goes into analysis saying, uh, apparently uh, on some data, uh, uh, that uh, within se in one century, uh, the average American has lost two hours of sleep, for instance, uh, compared to oh, two or three hours in one century. And he's like, okay, so he's making the sort of, it's, more, it's not a very articulate book, it's more like an opening of, uh, that we might get the uh, riddance of sleep. Uh, or that forces might be at work for us to be, uh, you know. Uh, um, 
that to me would be uh, something like I would call a world order. You know, where, where they're like, and it's not like there's some bad guy saying it, as if it's not like there's some guy is planning it. It's like, like there's a, such a concentration of a machine that is, uh, has been created for very contradictory reasons, but that there's still a machine going somewhere, you know, cap uh, you know uh, that, that actually generates, uh, going back to uh, unions, for instance, or the fact that here, well, in that same neighborhood, uh, 30, 40 years ago, uh, there were groups that were uh, fighting, uh, uh, you know, uh, Black Panthers, or you know, there were people. That, today, it seems more difficult to get people to, uh, at least in my understanding, maybe I'm wrong, uh, maybe it's a misrepresentation, to to get the, uh, to see people uh, are organizing, uh, um, and I've heard from the community that uh, they were saying, well, this generation, you know, they don't see much hope, they're a lot in drugs, uh, and it's harder to get them to uh, get involved into some sort of political project. Uh, that's the, uh, also, uh, would that, would, I would get the feeling today that uh, one of, uh, and again, it's very simplistic and very, um, but there has been so much force put uh, into the destruction of unions, uh, uh, in uh, I know in France it's a, it's a, a lot of under pressure uh, that uh, hasn't the art the capacity of uh, each other to uh, articulate and organize been uh, destroyed and uh, aren't we more today in competition with one another than we were before it seems to be the case to me when I look at architectural trend thirty years or uh, fifty uh, a century ago you would see 30, uh, 30 architects on the same picture for the same project. Now, you could not get 30 architects on the same picture. For the they would all be in competition with one another. Do you see what I'm saying? It yeah, I, I went to Yugoslavia and Guinea and then more recently Asia, with, I'd say, with basically these same questions to try to disentangle where and how do these things combine. And, and within Guinea or within socialist or communist Yugoslavia or within communist China today, how are these things really changing? And the, the I mean the simple refutation of some of the some of the Western uh, more more narrow interpretations is inside Yugoslavia you had uh, that is we, we, we studied we studied closely the policy making uh, at, 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 the, at the local level. Uh, we interviewed many people, two, me and a student, two Americans, a senior and a junior Yugoslav. Four of us went and we interviewed every other day. And then every second day we discussed the meaning of, of what, what we had done. We went, went over four months and then the top Yugoslav came, came back to Chicago. He got a PhD in, in two and a half years. He went back. He wrote a little, uh, he wrote, he, he, he was unhappy with some of the things. Going. So the senior guy went to jail because he was a dissenter within Yugoslavia. This is, this is uh, before, before, the, before 1989. And uh, the junior guy wrote a new constitution. He had a, he had a law, PhD in law and a PhD in sociology. So he, he was then a, a, young, a young faculty member. After 1989, with the, the, uh, the, the, the end of the Soviet bloc and the like, he pulled out his constitution and it was adopted, he then became president of the, of the Supreme Court in Slovenia, and he was sort of the philosopher king, the platonic implementer of his, of his constitution in which he had written for the, for the new society. Okay, so, so he was, he was it, it, before that, he was the lead Communist Party uh, student, he was president of the student union in the of the of the law school of the university. He was law and social science. He was president, and he was the top political party informant linkage with the communist party. And so he was the trusted official ideological leader. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he was very smart, and we and so so the other the other Yugoslavs don't work with him. He's he's he, I mean he's he's the he's the party and this and that, but he's smart. I said if he's smart, I want to talk to him. So. We talked with him. We worked every day for four months. He came here. He did a brilliant PhD. And he's just sent me two books. He's now over 60. He sent me t t two books. He's new, new books. He, he, he was, uh, et cetera. So, so he's founded a new university. So the, the, the point is, inside Yugoslavia, 
they were doing new combinations of things as illustrated by this guy. Um, uh, who did they hate? That is when we went, when we made our interviews with council members, with civic leaders, and so forth. This is socialist, communist Yugoslavia um, under Tito. Who's really the bad guy? The bankers, the Yugoslav bankers. Are they are they capitalists? No, it's a, this is state socialism. But the bankers don't give us enough money. Okay, so what's so so that is the the banks are always the bad guys, whether they're socialist or communist or whether it, whether it I mean if it's if it's if it's the the Germans now lent the money to the Greeks, but inside Yugoslavia, inside China today, I'm sure the bankers are hated, and so and so or time and the time, your your example with time is not specifically capitalist or related to to, to capitalism. It's a more general process which you find in, you found inside Yugoslavia, inside China today. I mean, they, they, they use cell phones and computers the same as China. And if it's 24 yeah. 7 or not, that's not capitalism per se. It's, it's much more generally shared. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so in, in Yugoslavia, I said, you know, what, what is capitalism? Where does it end? The answer was capitalism is when, or so, <laughs> communism is when four people work together. So if we make these chairs and one person makes makes the seats, or no, a team, a team of four people can work together. And that's communism. Five people is capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in France there's that way. Do you know Coluche? Do you know? A little bit, yeah. He said uh, That, that Capitalism is the exploitation of mankind by mankind. Yeah. Uh, communism is the opposite. Vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> it's a classic. Uh, it's a classic here. <laughs> so okay, so maybe, maybe he stole this from you guys. Uh, it's a Polish thing? It's an old, it's an old Polish joke, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, I wonder, I, very honestly, I wonder how much... Because it seems that there's a lot uh, about... Uh, And again, maybe a lot about the individual. That it's something that I come often uh, here in a lot of discussion with Tim Samuelson with uh, the 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 strength of the individual. You you always come back a lot to uh, and this is not to put you in a box or something. But I think there's a lot of uh, value put on the individual uh, that I, I that, uh, uh, in the US uh, it comes from John Calvin Monsieur <laughs> Jean Calvin <laughs> uh, whereas I don't know maybe it's uh, like a sort of it's etatique uh, like a, the Rousseau is the sort of uh, Uh, you know, uh, more yes. like no. background. No, they, they, they went to Switzerland and they developed these ideas in Switzerland. So I've said often, Tocqueville should have gone to Switzerland. It's mm -hmm. a more pure version of Calvinism mm -hmm. than, 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 his, than his America. Mm -hmm. Or, and so, so he found it in, in New England, but uh, Swiss, I mean, Swiss, uh, Swiss Calvinism was... was uh, Because even like the notion of the... Like in France, the Republic... Is very important here. Republicans, I don't know what it stands for. Uh, the, the no, we have we have no king, so there's so there's, there's no reason to have a republic. I mean, for, republic in France means re means non noble, and and so you, well, it, it only has meaning if you're fighting the aristocracy. So there's been no no nobility or aristocracy, and and, and so that I mean that's the, that's the that's the simple big factor making America different. That there's mm -hmm. we, there's no there's no revolt against that leadership. Oh, I didn't know that. that. I, thought, I thought it was the the res publica was the the public thing, no? Was it yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. But, but the, uh, you, 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 but, you, but, but it's pu public, public is not republic. I mean, the hmm. the, the French republicanism is anti-church, anti-clerical, yeah. anti-noble. Yeah. And we yeah. have we have no state church. We have we have no yeah. we have no nobility. So there's no there's no rationale for it. Mm -hmm. So we share we share part of the 1789, but not. You don't have to have the guillotine because there's nobody to kill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I could think of a couple of the <laughs> yeah, I'm against yeah, the no, ca capitalists, capitalists, yes, mm -hmm. but that, but they, but capitalists are not individual capitalists are not are not the, the you know state church and the and the, um, and the and the nobility. That is the, the closest thing to 
to that in the U.S. is the South. And I, I lived in the South, and that, then the carrier of that was African Americans. Because the Old South had hierarchy. It had slavery, and it had, it was a, the economic system was built on slavery, and that was closer to, 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 the, and so, to the older French tradition. So the hierarchy that you have in Foucault, you have in, in, in you know, Derrida and the like, this, mm. in, in, in Bourdieu, then the Canard Chenet, mm. Charlie Hebdo, don't exist in the U.S., mm. basically, as I say. Where they exist a little bit is with the American South and with certain African Americans who come from that hierarchy which is the French, that is, it's not uniquely French, you find it in China, you find it in mm -hmm. Egypt, you find, so a strong hierarchy generates anti-hierarchy. And that's the core proposition of our book on the new political culture. We then trace that among African Americans, so with Martin Luther King, with uh, Jesse Jackson, with, so, and uh, with Obama. I mean, Obama comes out of that, that, they, that there's an egalitarianism that is the strong egalitarianism of 1789 with the guillotine comes from a hierarchy that must be killed. Mm. But then how about anarchy? Uh, it seems like there's a lot of uh, libertarian and uh, which... Yeah, which uh, yeah, li libertarian is not anarchy, I, I guess. No, 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 <laughs> like, no, yeah. no, no, but, yeah. uh, no, because sometimes they, they, they have uh, the sort of Uh, have weird, like you know, the Koch brothers now are aligned on the with some uh, very left wing people about the jail, you know. So it's just, I'm not saying it's the same thing, sure. it's just, but there's a strong and, you know, and, and anti state, yeah, yeah, anti state, yes. yeah, yes, like, absolutely. whether it's Chomsky sure. or the Koch sure. brothers, sure, uh, sure. Uh, which uh, is uh, strange. It, uh, it, it's strange, it's strange to a Frenchman or someone coming from a tradition of the strong, so like China. The, yeah. I mean, the Chinese, the Japanese share with France the strong state tradition. Yeah, And but, so, the, but, but then, yeah, no, because as you were saying, if I understand correctly what you were saying, there would be an opposition when there is something to oppose. Uh, if the anarchists uh, are, uh, so they're anarchists that are not oppositional uh, to uh, uh, an ordering power, or they're more like... Yeah, now, I'd say anar anarchists are drawing on some individual lifestyle concerns, but they're anti-hierarchy. E anti no, no, no more. No more space. We filled the machine. Okay. <laughs> so so t time, t time yeah, is yeah. up, I guess. Okay. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a non uh, non. There's no conclusion to that discussion, which is uh, okay. interesting. No, no, but I think yeah. No, no, we we're not uh, we're not gonna fake a conclusion. Uh, I think it's uh, an ongoing process. Well, thanks for I mean, taking so much time. Uh, oh, these are these are central, fascinating, critical issues for I mean for you and me and for many many others around the world. But that the, these are the same basic issues that have driven our work for 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 thirty years.